Hi there, welcome back to Sonic Academy, and this is me, Paolo Mojo, and today I'm going to take a look at Valhalla's Vintage Verb. It's a reverb plugin from Valhalla DSP, which is a company set up by a guy called Sean Costello, who is a self-confessed digital reverb and psychoacoustics nut. Um, if you've never used any of the Valhalla reverb plugins, I can personally guarantee you that they all sound amazing. Now the Vintage Verb, as its name suggests, is modelled around the classic digital reverbs of the 1970s and the 1980s, mostly uh, lexicons. And the way that it works, and the way that it's possibly slightly different to other reverb plugins, uh, it works in a combination of modes and colours. So this colour tab here, you can select 1970s or 1980s, and you get a corresponding colour scheme either the inside of a Habitat store in 1974 or a disco from the 80s and you also get this uh, monochrome now colour scheme. Now each of these colours corresponds to a different level of downsampling within the reverb. So for example in the 70s hardware version there's a maximum output frequency of 10 kilohertz and the sound's been downsampled internally and it's been reproduced with custom algorithms so that the modulation is dark and noisy and it's intentionally produced that way to give the impression of running at a lower sampling rate. The 80s version has a brighter sound in comparison and it runs at uh, the full bandwidth and sample rate although the modulation over here is still dark and noisy. And then the modern setting or the now setting as he calls it is included and it has very clean uh, and unaffected um, modulation. Now the other interesting thing is the mode. There used to be nine in the earlier version but now there's 15 and you've got all the typical plates and rooms and spaces um, but there's also some interesting settings like non-linear for example which combines gate, reverse and non-linear into one sound. And many of these algorithms here also emulate the classic the classic uh, hardware reverbs, which gives the plugin a pretty unique character. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to show a few uh, explanations for the different controls and an overview of the plugin in this first video, and then I'm going to do a second video where I show you some techniques that you can use the Valor Vin Valor? Valhalla Vintage Verb uh, in your own productions. Now, in order to show you this, I'm going to just switch back to the 1970s. I do like that colour scheme. And I've imported this sample here. Let's play that back. It's a perk roll and it is available from Sonic Academy. Uh, the guys there sent me a free pack. I'm not sure whether you all get it or not, but I don't know, maybe I'm special. Anyway, it's a Sonic Academy sample. I've put some stock logic plugins on it as well. I've, I've put an enveloper um, to take away some of the reverb on the sound that was built into the recording of the audio. And I've also just taken out some of the frequencies around 2100 hertz that I just thought were a bit, a bit nasty. All right, let's take a look at the controls. Um, on the far left, you get the mix, which allows you to mix the dry and wet as a percentage. I'm going to change back to console hall. Now, in order to show some of these other controls, I can probably best demonstrate that by putting the mix to 100%, but I'll, I'll get back to that. The pre-delay, um, the pre-delay gives you a measurement in milliseconds of how much of the original audio signal will come through before the, re the reverb starts to process on it. Um, this can be great for adding a kind of gated effect to snares. But if I set, say, 100 milliseconds, you can probably just hear that sort of pseudo echo. And what's happening there is that there's about 100 milliseconds of the sound going through then the reverb kicks in. So you're hearing that kind of ping pong effect between the two. One of the best things about the Vintage Verb plugin is this decay dial, this big decay knob here. It goes all the way from 0.2 seconds decay, the amount of tail that the reverb has, if you like, before it stops, up to a massive 70 seconds. Now, I don't know about you, but in my 
productions, I've always looked for those kind of reverbs that offer me a really long, not necessarily realistic, but long, expressive reverb tail that can kind of carry on infinitely. And I found a really good one with Native Instruments. Um, they did a, a set of plugins called Tractors 12, which is like an effects pedal thing that went through Guitar Rig, and it was a direct emulation of their own effects in the Tractor DJ software, which I also used when I um, played in clubs. But you had to put that in Guitar Rig and, you know, it, it was a little bit fiddly and I'd not really found a direct reverb plugin that did that job until I saw Vintage Verb. It's got the one of the best long tails um, that I've tried. So even for that reason alone, if you want to kind of affect the sound and have the reverb just carry on forever, then I would definitely take a look at this plugin. Uh, next to the decay, we've got the damping controls, and here you can um, you can high shelf the sound between 100 and uh, 20,000 hertz, and you also get the the high shelf, which works in exactly the same way as uh, an EQ curve. You can control the steepness of the high cut filter. Um, 24 decibels or minus 24 decibels gives you the the largest um, or the deepest high frequency cut. Whereas if you have it not decibels, then it will bypass the high shelving entirely. Underneath that, you've got the bass multiplier. Now this works in tandem with the decay. And, and what it does, it scales the decay time of the reverb, but just for the bass frequencies. And that's relative to the decay parameter. So for example, um, if I put that at say about three seconds, and then you change this dial, if I have it at two times, then the reverb tail of the bass frequencies is going to be six seconds long. And then you can control how many of those frequencies come through by adjusting this dial here. And that goes from 100 hertz up to up to 10,000 hertz. If I put the mix up to 100%, you might be able to hear that. You can hear that some of the bass frequencies of that sound are, are being taken out and then coming back in. Next to that, you've got the shape controls, which effectively gives you your virtual room, your virtual space, so the relative room size of the reverb. Turn the pre-delay down so you can hear it more effectively. Smaller room and a much larger room. And then underneath that, you've got the attack of the uh, of the shape and it controls the initial attack of the reverb delay, how quickly that reverb decay kicks in. The larger percentage equals a longer attack time and it can be used to adjust the perceived distance from the source within the reverb. So. And you hear the attack kick in more. Next to that, you've got the uh, diffusion controls. You've got early and you've got late. It's about the initial density of the echo within the reverb. The, the best way to describe this is if you want effects to happen in your reverb early in the signal, then you would adjust the early diffusion. And if, you, if you're more concerned with things in the long tail of the sound, then you would adjust the late diffusion. Next to that, we've got the modulation controls, and this is to do with the uh, the chorusing effect in the reverb tail, and this is also linked to the color. So, if you've got a downsampled, gritty 1970s um, setting, then the chorus is going to be correspondingly gritty and noisy. Um, let's try and demonstrate that. So, if I put the percentage of the chorusing up to 100%. and then adjust the rate. You can probably hear that change and you might be able to hear the difference as well if I switch to now. So there's no downsampling now. And you'll hear more high frequencies there because Unlike the 1970s reverb, it's affecting frequencies above 10,000 um, kilohertz. And then finally, in the chain, let's switch back to the 70s, uh, you get the overall EQ controls for the high cut and the low cut. So 
once again with the uh, mix at 100% I can adjust how much of that reverb tail gets through the EQ so it's like an overall EQ um, shaping tool and then of course you get I'm I mean this might be the thing that 90% of you will only ever use you get all these presets and as you'd expect from uh, Valhalla they're all great and they they're very clear about about uh, the various categories if you want a gated reverb a big space a room plate it's all there and you get an extra set of presets from Don Gunn who worked closely with Sean to um, develop this plugin so that's a basic overview of the plugin and what it does hope that's helpful why won't that disappear yes there it goes and in the next video I'm going to show you four classic techniques that you can use a reverb for and um, we're going to use vintage verb to to do them see you soon Thanks everybody for watching, commenting and indeed liking. We really do appreciate all the support we get here on our Sonic Academy YouTube channel. So if you found this video super useful, please, we'd love you to hit the subscribe button. We update the uh, YouTube channel every week with new content. And if you want to watch some more relevant content, just click on the videos beside me.